Amen. Everything in this book. Everything in this book. Come here. Belongs to me mm -hmm. as I read it well, and receive it. Uh -huh. My heart. My heart. My life. Mm -hmm. My mind will be transformed. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I expect great things. Amen. 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 Yes, so I receive it. Woo. This is good to me. As the old folks say, down in my sanctified soul. Mm -hmm. just feel good. Mark 5, before I start shouting. Mark 5. Today we're going to talk about demonic forces next week, next Sunday. I plan, prayerfully, I would like to teach you on angels. Amen? Mm -hmm. um, though I have knowledge, it is limited. So I'm relying on the Holy Spirit and God and praying on Revelation in addition to some study. Amen? So after all of that, if it be the will of the Father, we will talk about angels next week. Amen? Amen. Next Sunday. So everyone say, next week, this time. Next week, this time. We're going to talk about angels. Amen. And uh, their role, they're so important in the life of a believer. Oh, and yes. they're a lot more than just little bright figures with wings. Like they are very instrumental in the life of every believer. So I want you to know about them. I want you to be well educated. And most of all, in the words of my pastor, Dr. Rosa Herman, you need to start employing your angels. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, I'll give you a, a preview of next week's message. The Bible says he gives you a host of angels. Mm -hmm. That could, I don't know how big a host is. Could be two, two hundred, two thousand, two million. <laughs> Either way, let me tell you something. You should not have an angel that doesn't have a work to do. Amen? So I got to commission my angels to get busy. Amen. That's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. Your angels work for you. Every single body got an angel. Mm -hmm. A host of angels. That's what the Bible say. Yes. He said, I'll give you. He won't talk about just me. He talk about everybody. Amen. That's right. He said, on the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Mm -hmm. That's not just pastors. We read it and we limit it to ourselves. He talking about everybody. Mm -hmm. The gift that's on me rests on you too. Amen. Whatever your specific gift is, it rests on God has poured into you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And your job is to utilize that gift to work the word and work the altar. Amen. To bring people in. Amen? Amen. And uh, that's what God wants us to do. So that's next week. I would much rather talk about that. It's much, I like talking about angels. Amen? Mm -hmm. I don't like talking about demons because I feel like I don't like the devil. I don't like, I don't talk to him. Mm -hmm. You got an agreement. You don't bother me, I don't bother you. He bothering me. I don't bother him though. Amen. 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 You don't like me, I don't like him. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to teach you about him because it's heavy on my spirit. And you need to know. You need to know about the spirit world. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is a spirit filled, spirit led church. We talk a lot about spirit living in the spirit, but you need to know about the spirit world. Amen. Amen. So, um, Something that we want to start off with is, you know, Satan, the angel, Satan, whose name is Lucifer, was once an angel. He was an angel of influence. He had power and authority. God entrusted him in heaven. You understand? Heaven, as you know, is one of the most sacred places that we know of, one of the most beautiful places that we have yet to witness or see. But heaven is the goal, right? It is pure, holy, beautiful, amazing, whatever big, great word you have, that's heaven. Amen. So he was up there in heaven. And again, we know he had influence based on his ability to reach. Amen? Amen. We know he was a musician. When the wind of God would blow through him, beautiful sounds would come. And uh -huh. yes. And they, it's also said that he was handsome. He was easy on the eyes. He was Amen. not no ugly for the sake of my example, brother, Amen. he was nice looking. He had triceps and biceps and, you know, the best hair and probably the best eyes. Amen. But what happened with Satan, and it's funny because it's mimicked in the earth, uh, what happened with Lucifer was he got big headed. Amen. And he thought he could be where God was because it's something about when God promotes you and you have an inkling of immaturity, you know what happens? You begin to think that you can do what other people do. Mm -hmm. You start looking at leadership and you start talking about them like, well, Pastor B should have said this. Well, if I was him, I would do that. That's the biggest mistake. Those are words of death for those of you who don't know. If, when it comes to leadership, if I were them, I, you're not them. You've never been a pastor. You've never been a president. So I can't talk about Biden or his decisions because I've never run a nation before. Amen. So I'm not qualified 
very few are qualified to critique President Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. I've never been a VP of a country. Amen. I've never been on the Senate, so I can't say if I would, y'all see where I'm going? Yeah. Pastor Rosa said in a teaching years ago, quoting her again, she said, a private, a colonel thinks differently than a private. Mm -hmm. A business owner thinks differently than an employee. And she went on to say that we think differently based on our, the, the positions that we have, based on where we are at that time. Mm -hmm. That's how we think. And that's why it makes sense, because a lot of times I'm sure y'all have wondered, like, why is Pastor B like that? Why did he do that? Or why did he say that? Or why did he react that way? It's, it's different. The view from my eyes and your eyes are different. Amen. Even now. My view, I can, I can see all of you because I'm standing in front of you. Amen. I'm elevated because I'm standing. Amen. Right? I'm standing here. Looking back on where we come from. But you are sitting down. Amen. Looking up at me. So... Our view of one another is different. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. So we have to make sure that we are not adopting the mentality of Satan. Well, I can do it because it looks so easy. Satan thought the same thing and he got kicked out of heaven. Because he's Lucifer, prior to that, he went around and told people, you know what, we could do this ourselves. Mm -hmm. Look at God. He ain't doing nothing. We could do this. And then he left that person, went to another, went to another, went to another. Finding people who agreed. Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't say yeah, maybe they didn't say no, but they just kind of were like, hmm. He intrigued them enough that they became a part of him. That makes sense. Amen. Amen. That's what the enemy is doing even now. He intrigues us enough that we begin to wonder. And that wonder takes the place instantaneously of your faith. Mm -hmm. So when he got evicted from heaven, all of those who wondered or entertained him went with him. Mm -hmm. That's how we got where we are today with him. And he allowed, God allowed him to be the prince of the air. Oh. Go on and roam the earth. You can do what you want to do. I'll let you have that. But that's it. So he is a God, small G, mm -hmm. of the world. Mm -hmm. God is a big G, mm -hmm. God of everything. Amen. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So, my point is, and I feel like I said it so slow, but I really want y'all to get it. If he can contaminate heaven as perfect as it is, do you really think you and I stand a chance? Have you considered the fact that he, he was in the place of perfection, absolute perfection, and contaminated that and got removed? Now is here, and he wants you and I to do exactly what he did. He wants us to fall from grace. He wants us to be out of place so that we can't do what God has called us to do, and eventually we'll never be where God has called us to be. That makes sense to you? Amen. This is a very important teaching, because you are on assignment. Mm -hmm. We know that, I don't have to say it again. However, you have to remember that you have spirits who are against you, demons who are trying to stop you. They can't hurt you without your permission. But you got to be ready for them. And you got to know who you are and whose you are. Amen? So in Mark 5, verse 1, are you there? Amen. I wasn't going to read it because I know I've taught it to you before, but we're going to go ahead. Verse 2. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came to him from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs. No one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs in the hills, he would carry out, excuse me, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? Everyone say strong. 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 Here's a factor. This is worth remembering for the rest of your life. You ready? Whoever is possessed by a demon takes on the characteristics of the demon. 
Someone who is as small as Jamie, who is a small frame woman, for those who don't know, if she were, for the sake of this illustration, I don't even want to use that, somebody who is small frame is overtaken by a spirit, they become really strong because that spirit is strong. Mm -hmm. So although they're bound by chains and whatever, they can break it because now it's not them that's living but the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Everyone say spiritual law. Spiritual law. You will find quite obvious by the time this teaching is over that there is a spiritual law. There are things, spirits have a limit. Just like God, although he is God, he set limits for himself. We all know the law of free will. Though God can intervene in our lives, he will not without our consent. Amen. He's God enough to do whatever he want to do, but he's also God enough to respect the law that he has set in order, Amen. as it is with the spiritual law. Demons have laws they follow, just like the Holy Spirit has laws they follow. I'm getting ahead of myself, but we just want to go there. As far as receiving, someone asked me, can you be possessed? The word possessed means to own or live in, to basically take residence in, meaning it's mine. Mm -hmm. So to be possessed means a demon has come into your body and taken over it and now owns it. It is in control of it. Mm -hmm. It controls your functions and your decision making. Mm -hmm. So we look at exorcisms and stuff. Can I get possessed by a demon? Not without consent. The same way the Holy Spirit will not come and dwell in you. The same way the Spirit won't take over your body and make you shout. Because mm -hmm. people say the Holy Spirit made me dance. No. You got in partnership with the Spirit and y'all dance. Amen. But the Holy Spirit ain't going to push you and you go crazy. That's not God. Because now you're breaking the law of free will. Amen. That's God's law on the earth. You see? Mm -hmm. So I can be possessed by a Spirit based on how I receive the Spirit. How I let it in. Going back to previous teachings, we know you got the three gates. The eye, the ears, and your mouth are all gateways into the enemy. Mm -hmm. Once he has entered in and I saturate it, I keep on doing things conducive to that spirit. Then it takes over me, as it is with the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you do things conducive to the will of God. Read your Bible. Make time for prayer. You'll learn over time, you begin to hear the Holy Spirit more. You begin to feel the Holy Spirit more. You see the gifts of the Spirit be evident in your life. Amen. So all of the spirits are obeying a law. It's just our choice of what laws are we going to obey. And that determines which spirit gets to take residence on the inside of them. Which also brings up another point. Everybody got a spirit. Mm -hmm. Either it's the Holy Spirit or it's the Satanic Spirit. Mm -hmm. But everybody got a spirit. Yes. Because something is running you. You're not designed to run yourself. Mm -hmm. Though we, are, we have the mind and the intellect to make decisions and all of that. But something rules. Something gives us these impressions. Something helps manipulate those decisions. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So when this man, when they're talking about this man who saw Jesus and was cutting himself and really strong, it's written because Mark wanted us to understand, look, this brother was that possessed that he was extremely strong, that nobody could control this man. Mm -hmm. Although they knew the man, <coughs> They talk to the man, because he won't always like that. Mm -hmm. And now, he cannot be tamed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? He saw Jesus, you know the story. He went to him. Jesus cast him out. They begged. You know, there were so many spirits in the man. He was begging, please don't send us back. Can we at least go into the swine? They went to the swine and drowned. And drown. I'm going to tell you something hilarious. There are people right now, in 2022, who said they will not eat pig, no bacon or nothing because it's filled it, mm -hmm. because it had demons in it. Mm -hmm. that's right. I find that hilarious. Because if that's the case, we should also not drink water. So where did the water, where did the pigs go to? The water. Everyone say you need revelation. You need revelation. And you need insight. Yeah, well, nothing wrong with them pigs. They were nearby. That's where they wanted to go. 
Jesus cut him a break. Mm -hmm. Hey, Amen. Jesus, I ain't going to argue with him. Amen? Amen? Go to chapter 9 real quick. Are you learning? Amen. Say this with me. Say, I, I run spirits. Spirit. I, I govern spirits. Spirit. Amen? Amen? You are not subject to the spirits. The spirits are subject to you. The only spirit you should be subject to is the Holy Spirit. When you talk about demonic presences, mm -hmm. I'm in charge of them. Mm -hmm. We got those that command in Genesis. He said, run the earth and subdue it. Amen. Run it the way I would. Mm -hmm. You can't run it if something giving you pushback. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got to be in control in order for you to govern something. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, it's better for me to go because you need something in you instead of me with you. Amen. So I'm going to give you Holy Ghost to keep you, Amen. to help you. And you got spirits that's going to push on you back. Jesus went through it. Hello? How many times did he encounter Satan? Amen. How many times was that brother challenged by Satan? Amen. So if he was challenged, you know we're going to be challenged. That's Amen. right. So God says, I need for you to know who you are and who you are. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? That's right. So uh, look at verse 14 of Mark 9. You there? Amen. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd. And the teachers of the law, they would say the Pharisees. The Pharisees. They were arguing with them. As soon as the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are they arguing about? Now, let me tell you about the Pharisees. The Pharisees are people who started off with good intentions. You know, they come from Judaism. So they wanted to get away from Judaism because they were like, uh-uh. This is not what we believe. We want to serve God and serve him with our whole heart. Amen. Amen? Amen? Amen. This is why Bible class is important. So, they started out well intentioned. But as they got old, as they matured, they went from people who were just trying to get closer to God to people who became real arrogant. Amen. To they liken themselves like God. Mm. So everything that Jesus did, uh-uh, uh-uh, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. So when I say lift your voice and shout, uh-uh, uh-uh, not in church. Mm -hmm. That's out of order. You're mighty loud. Come on, y'all, let's praise him. Uh-uh, we don't do all that dancing and stuff. Uh-uh, we'll get the hymn books. Let's go. You know how we do. Yeah. People of tradition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Religious without relationship. Amen. Amen. So they got out of the way. So that's why there was arguing going on. So verse 17, a man in the crowd answered, Teacher, Rabbi, I brought my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech. Remember. When someone is possessed, they take on the characteristics of the spirit because now it is not them living, but the spirit living. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Remember what did Jesus say? It's not that I live, but the spirit of God living on the inside of me. Uh -huh. Right? Amen. So as it is, everyone say the law of the spirit. The law of the spirit. And just, you got that so far? Amen. Amen. So they has robbed him of his speech. Now the word rob, we know, is violent. You have violently taking away my right to speak. You have my speech and my vocal cords under arrest. I cannot function the way I would normally function. It makes sense because that screams what I just taught you, that the spirit is in the front seat and I have been shoved into the back seat, not even the passenger side, the back seat. Mm -hmm. Amen. That makes sense to you? Amen. Jesus said, well, look at verse 18. There's more to the story. He goes on. He says, whenever he seizes him, it throws him into the ground. Whenever the spirit is controlling him, it throws him into the ground, right? He foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Jesus said, oh, unbelieving generation. He replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring to me the boy. Mm, mm, mm. You got to get to a point where you're sick of the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? Come on here. Ain't nobody scared. I am tired. Now, at first, that's how it was with me. Pastor B was scared. Stuff be knocking, because that's how it was at first. My door would open by itself. Stuff be knocking. This was before I could see them. Y'all, covering my, my head with my blanket. Going to sleep. Co I'm making a willing, I'm willing to cohabitate with a demon. I ain't rebuking it. I just don't want to see it, so it'll be alright. Mm -hmm. 
And when daylight came, I felt like I was safe because that's childlike. Well, it changed when you start seeing them in the daytime, don't mm -hmm. yeah. So then I had to learn how to rebuke and how to believe in my rebuke, how to believe what I'm praying. You can't rebuke and be scared at the same time because fear removes your faith. Uh -huh. So now you're rebuking. You're saying it, but it ain't going to work, which you'll see why later on. Uh -huh. So they brought him the boy, verse 20, and the Spirit saw Jesus and immediately threw the boy into a fit. Mm -hmm. They want to say power. power. That's why it is so important that you have a life. I know you in church and sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you're just tired of people. Sometimes you're sleepy tired, but I mean tired of the situation. Like I'm tired of coming to the same church in the same chair to the same song to, you know, a Pastor B is kind of routine. I know it's church. Church is routine. But, you know, God, I'm just kind of tired. I can't get tired. Amen. I got to stay close to Jesus. Amen. See, and if you stay close to Jesus, church won't get born to you. Amen. The Holy Spirit gives you that fire that you need. Amen. And you understand every time I come here, I'm being renewed. See, it's born when you need to be entertained. But when you're coming because you want to be fed, oh, it's a different story because I'm eating. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't never been bored in a restaurant where I like the food. Amen. All right, all right, come on. Mind your business, Pastor. So they brought him. Jesus said, verse 21, to the boy's father, How long has he been like this? He said, From childhood, he answered. Um, it has often thrown him into a fire or water to kill him. But if you can't do anything, take pity on us and help us. This thing is that it wants this boy dead. Mm -hmm. So not only are you already, you know, making spit bubbles and all this stuff, you're doing it next to dangerous situations. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Look at what Jesus said in 23. If you can, <laughs> everything is possible for him who believes. He didn't even take, he didn't say, do you know who I am? He didn't say, oh, you don't know what church I go to, huh? Amen. He didn't say, you don't know how much Holy Ghost power I got. He said, if you believe, you're going to receive. Amen. Jesus, that man, you got to catch it. He said, I need you to help my unbelief. If we made it in 2022 terms, he said, I don't have the faith. Help me with my faith. Mm -hmm. Jesus helped him. Mm -hmm. Have faith Amen. and watch it work. Have faith and watch it work. Amen. Believe and receive. Mm -hmm. After he said that, he goes to work. Immediately, the father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw this, excuse me, when Jesus saw that the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. The mm -hmm. spirit shrieked. That's a high, thrilling scream. Mm -hmm. Convulsed violently all over the place. Mm -hmm. You see that? Amen. And came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he did. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him proudly, and this is what we do. How come I couldn't do it? <laughs> Because I prayed, this, I did what you just did. Remember the father said, I asked your disciples to pray. He followed protocol. He didn't jump the line. He followed protocol. He went to Jesus' staff. Mm -hmm. I went to the ministry staff. And none of them, the boy's still up here rolling around spitting. Mm -hmm. Come on, help me. I didn't mean that as funny as it sounds, but that's what he said. He said, you know, come on here and help me. Yeah. And look at what Jesus said, 29. This kind can only come out mm -hmm. by prayer. Yes, we can rebuke and I bind you, Satan. But sometimes I got no war with that thing. I got to pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pastor B, but what if I don't have a prayer life? What if I'm still struggling with my 30-second, two-minute prayers? What if I haven't done what you said and given God my 30 minutes a day or my hour a day and made time for Him? Then you're going to be subject to a demon. He said in 29, this kind can only come out by prayer. That means sometimes you'll be praying and it'll look like nothing has happened. Sometimes you'll go to cast out and there'll be no results. Amen. You'll still see it. That means I got to wrestle with this thing. I got to keep on praying because I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what I believe. Amen. So I keep praying and I keep praying and I keep praying. Amen. 
but I gotta have a prayer life. Amen. Otherwise, I'm a tingling cymbal and a sounding brass. I'm just saying stuff. Mm -hmm. But I have to have a prayer life. If I have a prayer life, I have a spiritual life. I have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. If I have a prayer life, then I have a life. Amen. When I teach you about faith, faith at some point operates on its own, but you reach a dimension in God where you have to have a life that corresponds with your faith. Amen. They go hand in hand because there are situations and circumstances in your life that will come up that if you don't have a life to back up what you're confessing, it's going to fall through. Amen? Yeah, amen? Faith is your vehicle, but your life is what hits the accelerator. So I got to make sure that I'm living the life of faith, that I'm not just talking faith, but I'm also walking by faith as well. What did James say? Don't see nobody in need and do nothing to support their need but wish them well. I know you're hungry because you look feeble. You look like you're from Africa. I pray that you find your buffet. I'll be believing God with you. But I'm not going to give you no money. Or if you don't want to give money, I'm not going to bring you a plate. I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to just believe God for you. Yeah, da, 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 da. Amen. God, J James said, that's no good. How dare you have faith, but nobody see it? Amen. As it is in your living. Make sense? Amen. The next thing I would take you to is the seven sons of Sceva in Acts 19. We don't got to turn there because y'all remember. They saw what Peter, excuse me, not Peter, they saw what Paul did. It talks about how Paul worked miracles. Paul performed some stuff. He was teaching real good. He was loosing real good, binding real good. People were getting healed, delivered, and set free. These sons of Sceva saw, the, saw what he did, and they copied his words. They took his teaching. I have heard people, and there's nothing worse, before I say my next statement, there is nothing worse than a regurgitated word. Picture this. The Word of God, people who get up here, we are anointed to prepare good food for you to eat. Amen. If I go on YouTube, or I go on, because they got sites now where you can download messages. I don't y'all don't preach, so you may not know that, or y'all do. But you can download messages from other people. You even got some folk who will sell you their stuff. I ain't going to call no names, but them preachers you see on TV, a lot of them will sell you their message, transcripts, so that you can take it and preach it again. Yeah, that's what they do, and they make money off of it. But anyway... That's called a regurgitated word. But this is what that is. You imagine going to McDonald's. This is going to be so graphic, but I'll be praying for your stomach right now. You go to McDonald's and you put your order in, right? But well, somebody's going to chew it and spit it back out and put it in a bag. You're going to eat it? But that's what we do. You know people go to churches just like that. Mm -hmm. When somebody chew the word of God for you and spit it out and say, here go the word. Oh, ain't it a good word? They preach it. You're there shouting over the food. Yeah, I'm not a dog. Now, I had a dog named Martika in seventh grade. She had car sickness. If I put her in the car, she would just, <clears throat> you know. And my sister hated it because my mama, was, Pastor Dallas said, she ain't riding my, this was, this was pre-Amber. See, Amber came with VIP benefit. Before Amber, every dog was outside on a chain. Amber was the first house dog, okay? So, you know, she won't put them in the car, but Tanya, my sister, she was my big sister. You know, she was, she was my big sister. Back then, she was really big, though. But praise the Lord, we, we thank God for weight loss. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just pick on her because that's my sister. But every time the dog was in there, it would just <clears throat> go on to Lake Rim Park. It would just, I mean, all over the back seat. You know what? I used to hit the dog. Because you know what this dog would do? She would start licking it and eat all it'd be gone. That's what they do. Look at somebody and say, I'm not a dog, though. I'm not a dog. Yeah, we're not a dog. I don't want nothing that's already been chewed. I want real word. Pastor B, what that got to do with, when you go imitating people, which is imitating, so y'all know, if someone copy your style, copy your word, try to act like you, that is the greatest form of flattery, okay? That's real nice. But you make sure that you don't do it. You be original. Okay, I want the version that everybody get it need to be fresh. You don't need nothing expired, baby. I ain't trying to be like nobody. I can't preach like Dr. Herman. I can't preach like Clef Rowan. I can't do it like oh, Joel Osteen and Bishop Jakes. All of them are wonderful and really skilled with their vernacular, but it ain't me. This is me. I can't, I can't preach any other way. Only me can hit my glasses by doing it. That's just me. Hallelujah. You, you got to make sure that you are doing what God has called you to do. The way God has called you to do. Give God praise right there. Because you're an original. There's no other version like you. Amen. That's right. So these sons of Sceva, they went. Whew, Jesus. They went and tried to cast out the devil. This is why having a life is important. Y'all, I mean this with all of my heart. 
don't be one of those people who come to church and say amen. 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 Don't be that person. This is what you got to do. You got to be somebody who can live the word with your whole heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You have to make sure that you are living the word. Amen. There's something up here. Y'all help me. Come on, Pastor, do real quick so I can finish. But you got to make sure. Well, stand over here and do it. So, no, and I can't. Thank you, God. Okay. Thank you. Give Jamie and Pastor D a hand. They were trying to make sure I was cute on camera. Thank you. Appreciate it. But say, I got to live the word. The whole word. The whole word. Yeah, you can't pick and choose in the 21st century because you know that's what we do. We pick and choose what we live. I think this apply. You know, no, the whole word is right by itself. God didn't need an editor. The word is right all by itself. Amen. So you have to have a life. You got to live right. If you don't, you come to church and you shake your head. Can I be honest? Y'all know my heart. Y'all know I possibly don't both shake. It's been a lot of people in this church, because this is the one I'm responsible for, because my job as a pastor, there's another component, and I don't think people know, another component of pastoring is protecting. Mm -hmm. I have to protect your spirit. I have to do that by giving you truth, telling you what you don't want to hear, by getting on your nerves. By when you ask me a question, I give you the answer that you're praying to God that I don't give you. That's part of my job, okay? There have been people in this ministry who did not listen and now are paying a price because they disobeyed the word of God. Amen. And I thank God for Pastor D and Pastor T. But Pastor T texted me something last night because I was venting, confiding in them as I do from time to time. And he said, remember you taught us that these are not your people, these are God's people. And when they walk away from you, they walk away from God. When they don't obey what you teach, they're disobeying God. It's nothing personal, it's a God thing. And if you're not careful while you're living your life, you'll take stuff that's not your responsibility and internalize it. So you're having migraines that don't belong to you because it's God's stuff. Amen. You're not sleeping at night talking about myself because it's God's stuff. Because when y'all leave, I have to be crying and carrying on when I get by myself because I'm wondering, is so-and-so all right? Are they okay? Was it something that I have done? Then I mess up because I always hold myself accountable. I don't take this as a joke. My first question when I don't see you is, God, what did I do to run them away? Mm -hmm. Was it anything I've done? Nine times out of ten is not, but there are times I know because I'm, I'm me. Yeah. Sometimes I look at y'all the wrong way and y'all like, whoa, you know I'm not the one. Uh, you know, it, and it's nothing personal. A lot of times it's just past B being past B. Amen. 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 Like when I come in, I, I've heard that over the years a lot. You come in during praise and worship and you don't look at nobody, you don't speak to nobody. Praise and worship is for me, okay? I need help to survive the week. And sometimes I'm barely walking in the door. I'm talking like my doctor now. I'm barely walking in the door. So yes, I got tunnel vision. I need the worship. Amen. I need the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I ain't coming in to wait. You know, Pastor Allie do that because that's her. She come in and she got the wave. Pastor BK did. I need to worship while the music going. Amen. I need to get mine in now. Amen. 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 A girl told me in college, I ain't going to say what she was talking about. She said, you better get yours and I'm going to get mine. Amen. And I just adopted that in the church. I'm going to get mine. Even if you don't get yours, I'm going to get mine. Amen. Yeah, some of y'all look like you understand. Hallelujah. Y'all need to repent at the end of service. Change on that like you don't know how it is. <laughs> I love it when y'all play innocent. It's so adorable. Like, Pastor B, I'm so confused. Get what, like a candy? Ice cream? Yeah. It was hallelujah. All right, so we have to make sure that we're living. Because I don't want to be like the seven sons of Ski, but y'all know what it said later on? Go to Acts 19. Is it Acts? Go to Acts 19 real quick. I'm going to show you. Then we got to go. But isn't this a good word? Amen. I'm teaching y'all this because y'all, when you see a spirit, I want you to be like it's on and popping. I don't want you running. I don't want you hiding under no covers. I don't want you blowing up all of our phones here in the ministry. Talk about Pastor D, what do I do? And I'm going to say, you better get to praying. Bye. Amen. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. If the spirit thinks he's going to step to me and intimidate, one thing I don't do, I don't like being intimidated. Mm -hmm. You're going to get batted in the spirit of shame. Say amen. All right. So y'all at Acts 19? Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 11. It says, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So that even the handkerchiefs and aprons that he had touched and taken to the sick and their illness were cured. And the evil spirits left them. Some Jews 
who went around driving out evil spirits, tried to invoke the name of the Lord, invoke, invoke, invoke the name of the Lord over those demon possessed. Mm -hmm. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief of priests, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered, Jesus I know, mm -hmm. Paul I know, but who are you? Mm -hmm. When you don't have a life, the devil will talk back. Who are you? You don't have any. Whose authority? Here goes some translations say this. Whose authority are you under? Jesus did it under the authority of God. Because God gave him that delegated authority. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when he left, he gave us that authority. But the authority only can be activated when you have the Holy Ghost. First of all, you're born again, you have the Holy Ghost, and you live in the life. When you don't have those, and you're not doing those, guess what? You have no authority. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why these demons responded and said, Who are you? Mm -hmm. Because they did not have that God-given authority, because they weren't living the life. See, this is the issue. Because when I teach this in other churches or have heard it taught in other churches, people always be sitting there like, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Yeah. You better make sure that your life is right. Let me tell you, let's make that clear. Don't you come. This ain't the part of the service where you need to bring your shovel. You better make sure. And I mean you better know that you know. A good way to determine if you're right, Pastor Allen, Ask yourself right now, if Jesus were to burst in them clouds and come, would I make it in? Or if the breath were to leave my body and I fall dead to the floor, is my spirit going with him? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, only you know. Because mm -hmm. we say we got to go to heaven and be judged, but I believe everybody know their faith. You know if you're right or not. Mm -hmm. You can be real deep about it. I'm not sure. No, you know if you've been walking the way God told you to walk. Uh -huh. You can make any excuse you want to, but yeah. we're not new to this thing. We're true to this thing. You know your own faith right now. Amen. The Bible says, search your heart. Amen. See if there be any wicked way. Amen. If there is, clean it up, Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. That has to be your prayer. Amen. Yes, There's no need for judgment day. It's just something that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Not that it's not important, don't misunderstand me, but I'm saying because we've been instructed to search our heart, God said, you can do a prejudgment check, you know, check. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself that. Amen? Amen. And if your answer is no, you may not want to be casting out demons by yourself. Amen. Because again, you have no authority. Because you're not right with him. Uh -huh. See, to have authority is, a remember, what we read a couple weeks ago, I am an heir to God, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. We're in partnership because I'm walking with him and I'm talking with him. There's a relationship. Remember that? Uh -huh. So because we have a relationship, when I'm operating in my God-given authority, I can cast out, I can loose, I can bind. But when that's not happening, there's some problems that will come about. Am I making sense? Because yes. I have to make it clear, otherwise I'm misteaching you. You have to have a life that means your words on your job, on your at your house, to your peers, to your friends, to other people on the road who may tick you off. You got to watch your mouth. Mm -hmm. I have to watch my walk. God, I don't want to be out of step. I can't afford to be out of step. But the enemy, oh, how he's waiting on you to be out of step because then he can go in and step into your life and take over. Because remember, you don't ride shotgun with him. He throw you in the back seat of your own car. Amen. It says here, after they asked him, who are you? In verse 16, the man who had an evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. It says the man. That's not plural, that's singular. One man who is driven by the Spirit, people who are demon-possessed take on the what? Characteristics. The characteristics of the Spirit in which has possessed them, right? Mm -hmm. So that brother was strong because he was empowered by a demon to be strong. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Aren't you glad that the Word of God is clear? Yeah. It says it overpowered them, every single one of them, because it jumped on them. 
it gave them such a beating that they ran out the house naked mm -hmm. and bleeding from their abundance of bruises. You don't go in the name of God without taking God. Amen. You don't get to use Jesus' name and not have Jesus in your life. Mm -hmm. That's right. Have y'all ever done, have y'all made that mistake? Maybe someone invited you somewhere and you name drop, and the person came and they were like, okay, hi. Mm -hmm. It was like they didn't know you. Or nothing to have. You didn't get a response. Maybe you were looking for it. It was kind of like a hey. Instead of a hey, you here. It was kind of bland. Y'all yeah. ever had that happen? Yeah. That's what happened when you go casting out devils and you don't read your Bible and you don't have a prayer life and you don't have the Holy Ghost. You pull it on Jesus' name, but everybody know that you were like, y'all ain't, ain't close like that. Amen. I'll tell you why. I think of it like this. Y'all ever notice how friends and people who hang out together, they got certain qualities that are similar. Mm -hmm. They talk alike, they act alike. Because yes. they're all doing the same thing, they're on the same level. Uh -huh. If I'm rocking with Jesus, there's a way I govern myself. Amen. I have a lot of his ways. Yeah. Think of your best friend. You could finish each other's sentences. Uh -huh. Amen. It should be that way with you. His words should be in my heart. Or I can quote him. Yes. And because I can quote him, I can live like him. Because we're that close. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yes. They couldn't do it, so they got their behind kicked. Mm -hmm. Here go another thing. When you go to pray for people, maybe somebody in your family asks you to pray. I can pray for you. And I'll pray with you. And I ain't laying hands. And I ain't going to be talking about no rebuke. We can come together and corporately rebuke. Mm -hmm. But I ain't going to be cast. Mm -mm. Let me tell you something. That spirit will come out when you say come out. It's going to jump on you. And you ain't protected because ain't nothing protecting you. Mm -hmm. We pass to be. When I go to pray, these two brothers, if I'm moving around the church, they with me. Mm -hmm. Someone got to do warfare for me. If I'm warring for you, somebody need to be warring for me. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they have to be covered and have a prayer life on their own so that while they're warring for me, they're good. Amen. Because mm -hmm. they're standing in the gap for me. And because they're standing in the gap, they're already covered under the blood. They're already covered under the Holy Spirit. But what if one is not living? What if one is a liar? What if one has a foul mouth? What if one is dabbling in sin? Then that one won't be covered. Amen. That makes sense. Amen. So that's why you have to stay covered. Amen. Amen. Say a life is required. A life is required. required. Amen. So God wants us to subdue the earth. Now, possession, I'm going to say possession. possession. Remember, it is the state of having or owning or controlling something. No demon can take over you without some sort of invitation. I got to watch what I'm watching on TV. I got to watch who I'm listening to. You know, the enemy is a liar, right? Mm -hmm. What we forget to tell you, we know that he's a liar, we know that he's a manipulator, but we also forgot to tell you that he is really good at making things beautiful. Mm -hmm. He's skilled. So if I can't stand, you won't tolerate somebody up here standing here telling you that, Jamie, you know what? I know you get lonely at night, so whenever you need something, you just go get some, okay? I know, Shane, you got a hard job. Sometimes you need an edible. And you go get you that edible. You won't receive that because this is a well-taught church. Amen. You know your Bible. So you're going to look at the person on this mic and say, you know what? You might need to go sit down. Mm -hmm. Or because we have good Episcopal see here, somebody else from the Episcopal see going to help them sit down. Amen. So you'll reject that because you can hear it, right? Mm -hmm. So what the enemy does is he puts music to it. A good beat to it. Mm -hmm. And you don't even realize that you're receiving something. He'll put in a movie. Make it sound real good. Make the preview look real interesting. You don't even realize you're paying twenty dollars to receive a spirit Amen. Mm -hmm. that you get to take home with you. Mm. Amen. Or he'll introduce it by way of a person who comes in the form of a friend. Maybe you got some commonalities and y'all can relate real good. But one day there's a suggestion. And because of the friendship, you don't want to sever it, so you kind of just play along, or you kindly reject it. They keep asking, so you finally break down. 
And now you live with something you don't even want. Mm -hmm. That's how he creeps in. Amen. And that's how possessing begins because he has crept in to the avenues in which you and I were unaware. But who opened the door? I did. Yes, yes. Amen. So this is important because he is a master of disguise. But God, I want enough of you on the inside of me, no matter how it's fluffed, no matter the beat, no matter the way it comes, I'll know the enemy when he's creeping around my door. And I can plead the blood. I can rebuke and arrest that devil who's trying to arrest me. But God, help me be sensitive enough to know what is and what is not of you. That has to be your prayer. And the more time you spend with God, y'all, the easier it is to detect what is and is not God. After you begin to hear from God, or the Spirit begins to share things with you, you realize that not something that don't add up. Mm -hmm. Anytime there's a spiritual contradiction, it's a red flag. Mm -hmm. God ain't gonna tell me to wait and then hurry up. Mm -hmm. This time, two weeks from now, that ain't that ain't it. Mm -hmm. God is a God of order, mm -hmm. order and structure. Yes, yes. He don't he don't change up and switch up. If he make me a promise, he, it's going to come to pass. Amen. I don't have to know how. I ain't got to know when. I just got to know that he said it. Amen. My job is to trust him at his word. Amen. Amen. The enemy is banking on you. Wearing down and it's been a while. I'm tired. I ain't got the job yet. I've been applying. Mm -hmm. Look at you. Giving up on God. By way of your mouth. You don't let the enemy in. You don't even realize you, you're speaking failure. Amen. That's true. I got to change. I got to secure my gates. Amen. Mm -hmm. God is God all by himself. He's a God that cannot lie. Yes. He's not the son of man that he has to repent. Amen. God, if you said it, I know you got me covered. Yes, Lord. The enemy wants so bad for us to just go away and just give up. Say, I will not quit. I will not quit. Go to Deuteronomy 18. I want to show you something real quick. It's in the uh, front of your Bible. Deuteronomy. It's the four, fifth book of your Bible. So after Numbers. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Uh, we're going to look at verse 9. Another thing that enemy is doing right about now is he's trying to make you feel like you're handicapped. Mm -hmm. Like nothing you do spiritually is working. Right. Can I tell you something? What you're doing spiritually, God hears your prayer. And God sees your faith. You hear me? God hears your prayer and God sees your faith. Before this message, for the past two days, I had a horrible migraine. And it will go and come, go and come, like once, twice every hour. And I'm functioning with it. But last night it got so bad, Shane was with me. And I went to the bathroom. He was helping me to the bathroom because my head was hurting that bad. You know how it's a pain that just throbs? And like you just don't want to, you don't want to move, you don't want nobody to touch you. Like your foot not hurting, but somebody touch your foot because your head is hurting. You just want them dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was that kind of situation. And I turned on the bathroom light. I've never had this happen. The pain, I thought my head was going to explode. Mm -hmm. I turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. And I laid in that bed and I woke up, I don't know how many times last night. We're getting ready to text you and say, I can't make it. Because I want, even as I got up, and I told your bishop, I said, I got here and the service started and my headache was gone. Mm -hmm. No headache since. And I just thank God. But it's like, I believe God was sharpening my faith. But I was praying, and I mean, praying, and I mean, praying. Mm -hmm. No relief. Like, I might subside, but I could still feel it, and then just come back. I'm like, God, do I not know how to pray? I know I got anointed, because I've seen people get healed. So I know you hear my prayer. Mm -hmm. 
because I'm not powerful at all. God is powerful, but I know you use me, and I know you hear me. Amen. Don't tell me you asked for other people, not for me, who didn't tell me who I need to go to. Amen. Shame, pray. That didn't work. I said, Shame got no power either. <laughs> but I realized something. I got to stay in faith. God was working the whole time. He was operating. He wanted me to operate in faith. Because I wasn't. I realized afterward, when my head quit hurting, you could think, Pastor Dallas, I put more faith in that medication. I was y'all ever tired of you ever been in pain and you take a pill and you time it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I knew I knew it was me put too much hope in the medication because the moment it hit my tongue, the headache was going away. I said, no, that's not faith. And that's not medicine. You want me to be codependent. Mm -hmm. So I took it. Mm -hmm. Part of me said, spit it out. I said, you know what? I'm, mm -mm. I'm trusting God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Y'all, that thing is that boom, boom. I said, you know what, devil? I know you're here. I know you're here. Now I just kept praying. Every time I woke up, I would pray. Wake up and pray. Wake up. I may have gotten maybe three hours of sleep all together last night. Just, But y'all, I'm so thankful. Because there's no way today I could be preaching this message with that kind of headache today. God is exercising your faith and he wants you to exercise your faith. But y'all, faith hit differently, as the young folks say, when you got to use it in the middle of a battle. You actually believe in God for healing. I know you know, because Jamie doesn't want to do it. But when you got to stand and believe God in the middle of the bad result after bad result and it look like your prayer not being answered ain't nothing working that's what the devil will tell you too Amen. he tell you exactly what God did not say mm -hmm. you're, you're going to lose your son all them tubes all this stuff he ain't going to make it the whole thing mm -hmm. you might need to go get your stuff together you just go home and quit the devil is a liar Amen. We kept talking faith over here. I know she was talking faith over there. Oh, if something going to happen, it's going to be the will of God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. And total healing. She that little joker that's running around that house tearing up stuff as we speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know. yeah. You just keep the faith. Hallelujah. Now you're going to believe God for, for good behavior. Huh? Yes. I bind terrible twos, right? Yes. I'm sorry. At least he can run. Hallelujah. All right, this is, I'm going to say this and I'm closing. Y'all learn, though, what the good to you. Deuteronomy 18, 9. You there? Mm -hmm. It says, when you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, when you enter the, everyone say the promised land. The promised land. When I enter my next level, what we say about July, I'm getting too excited. Completion. Completion, but we also said that, you know, seven is the number of completion. You better go ahead here. But we also said that's when we're getting that wealth transfer. We're getting that wealth transfer. When you get your wealth transfer, he said, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the people around you. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or their daughter in the fire, who practice divination, um, sorcery, or interferes, or excuse me, interprets, interprets omens, or engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium, or spiritualist who consults with the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. Amen. Mr. People, Amen. people just ask me about Long Island Media. Mm -mm, we don't do that. We don't do psychic. We don't do palm reef. None of, uh -uh. What did he say? Did y'all know that was in the Bible? Anybody ever ask you? Ever, that's it's in the back. We don't do that stuff. Who we need to go to? Something happens. We go to God. I don't need to call nobody. I don't need to ask nobody. You don't use a prophet as a fortune teller because some prophets do that. We don't do that. No, we trust in God. That's who I go to. You need an answer. I go to God. God's going right. to navigate me. Either He's going to tell me or He's going to navigate me through the Word of God. That's, that's why right. I got Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. We ain't going ever here, there, and everywhere. He said, You stay away from these people. Why well, is that important, Pastor B? That's what I'm going to say prophetic. When you, and I'm saying this and I'm done for it. I ain't going to lie to y'all like, like some people do. Like I do every other Sunday. But um, when, when you get to this new level, let me tell you something. One of y'all can fix this for me. When you get to this new level, you're going to have people of all kinds. You're going to have people of all kinds. And they're going to be practicing different things. Different money and different stuff like that. And let me tell you something. 
You better make sure that you are right with God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You better make sure that you know God with your whole heart. You got to make sure that you're living this word and that you're staying away from what he says stay away from. He said mm -hmm. those practices, now not just those as mentioned. Remember, we're in a different time now. It's Pride Month. I ain't, no, I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. It's Pride Month. I don't even think that's a good, if you're going to do it, you know, that's not even a good title. That, you know, why in the month got to be named after something that God hate? Amen? Amen? I don't even understand. Anyway, mind your business, Pastor B. <laughs> don't accept what the world has accepted. Amen. Just because a whole bunch of people in the White House vote on it, don't make it right. Just because the Senate said it's all right, that don't mean it's right. God's word is true. They're going to kill us one day because we say stuff like this. It's okay. I'm ready to go because I know where I'm going. And ain't nobody mad but the devil. Because God's going to have victory. Because I know when I go, I'm getting caught up because I'm fighting with you every day. And aren't we fighting to live right? To do this thing right every day? Amen. It's all right. It'll all be worth it when we get there. What's Amen. that song by Donnie McClurk? And when we all get to heaven, Amen. what a day of rejoicing it will be. Amen? Amen? That's not a religious statement. That's what we're working for. I don't know if maybe some people lose sight of it. But that's why we live the way we live every day. I'm living to live again because you're going to live again. Amen. It's because you, you close your eyes over here. You're going to open up somewhere Amen. else. I don't want to open up nowhere dark or nowhere hot. I'm trying to go to heaven. Amen. And the Amen. devil's working overtime in his job. So what that tell me? I better work overtime at mine. I will not be sick. I'm going to have long life until I'm satisfied. And God is going to use me to glorify Him. And I'm going to do so in full strength. Every ligament and bone in my body is going to be quite all right. Hallelujah. You got to wake up in the morning and say, God, you're touching my body right now. I ain't fighting weight loss or nothing. I'm not going to die to inflammation around my heart. I'm not going to die to none of that stuff. I will not die prematurely. You got to pray for yourself. Cover your and talk to yourself. Body, you ready to live another 20, 15, 30, 50 years? You ready, body? You ready, body? Mm -hmm. And I'm making you last. Amen. And we're going to be in good condition, too. We ain't going to be old and wrinkly at 70 and 80. Talk about so I just thank God to be in the building. No, come on, we're going to the mall. Let's go. We're going to the movies. You ready? Amen. Yeah, my grandkids going to be telling me, you can't keep wearing them, them, uh, them what's in the shorts. I just bought them. You can't be wearing, huh? I can't be wearing your two-in-ones, granddaddy. I'm going to say, I'm wearing my two-in-one. Yes, I am. Y'all don't know nothing about that. What's the little boxes I wear? I don't want to be too. What's the thing it's called? Compression. Compression short. Yes, y'all. When the pastor be with them, the sun's summer now, so I wear my basketball shorts and my compressions. My grandkids are going to say, Granddad, take that. I'm going to say, no, we, we wearing this. I'm cute. I'm trying to find you another grandmom. Come on here. You're going to be cute in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be praying in my compression and basketball show. I'm going to be the, the most fit pastor in the game at 90. Talking about some pray to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I, ain't, I ain't being slow. That ain't the will of God for my life. Coming here talking about some. Okay, God, me and Pastor D, we both be up. I ain't. What, what, what <laughs> Donna say? Shane, what, what did Pastor McClurk get? We both limping. Amen. Amen. No, that ain't, that ain't me. No, we're going to be up here jumping at 80 years old, talking about trying to compete who jumping the highest. Amen. 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 That's the will of God for my life. We're going to have a good time. Yes, Lord. If the Lord Terry is coming. Now, if the Lord come, which he might, then disregard everything I just said, I see you in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. You learn anything tonight? Did you get blessed? Amen. 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 Thank y'all so much. Listen, y'all just keep on fighting the devil.